You there? Do you hear this and think, "Wow, it's Amy Winehouse reincarnated"? <laughs> Some of you will say, "Oh yeah," and others, not really. Now, what about this? Does Angelina Jordan in Seven Heaven remind you of Amy Winehouse? Sometimes I wanna be powerful, gotta find the strength within me. <laughs> But Angelina Jordan's tone is actually much less similar to Amy's. Loma Faith is one of the closest voices ever to Amy Winehouse. I mean, listen to their less famous work. The smoke from my I know. So, are we having a brand perception problem? Well, a few questions come into play. First is, what is the Amy Winehouse effect? Effect, as in, what is the first thing somebody does when they try to impersonate Amy Amy Winehouse? Second would be, how easy it is to actually reproduce the Amy Winehouse effect without sounding like a karaoke impersonator. Third is, also, I use the word effect, not brand, because um. I don't want to go as deep into this as I did with my Diana Gurinova analysis or Angelina Jordan. The answer to the first question is actually somewhere in the middle because the Amy Winehouse brand, the one that went viral worldwide, it's somewhere around 40% a Mark Ronson invention and 60% Amy Winehouse. Uh, for those of you who don't know, here's Mark Ronson in free tracks. I mean, before meeting Mark Ronson, Amy sounded like this. After she met him. The singing technique is the same, but that's not really what reminded us of Amy Winehouse when we first heard Duffy's Mercy or Angelina Jordan's Heaven. We thought of Amy first because of the arrangement mainly, and that is a Mark Ronson creation. As a side story, he actually wanted to take credit for his part once and said, She would come to me with just a song on an acoustic guitar, and then you'd kind of dream up the rhythm arrangements and the track around it, implying that he was the genius behind the production. Um, but of course this backfired because Amy Winehouse got angry and Ronson, you're dead to me. One album I write and you take half the credit to make a career out of it. Don't think so, bro. <laughs> Unfortunately, he apologized and she came to her senses as well because that would have ruined the friendship and the image and the network and so on. Uh, about brands and very fancy wines. Do you know that the fanciest wine is the one that's homemade? The one that's local? <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, actually, three weeks ago, I visited a friend. His family owns a wine and champagne small business, and if you're ever in Reims, I guess the English version, France, <laughs> France, then uh, feel free to schedule a tour or order a bottle from Ah, order a bottle from Arnaud Beaufort. If he's <laughs> cheers from your cycle. Back to the virtual wine powerhouse <laughs> brand. Can we reach Amy's success by reproducing her style? I personally doubt it. The issue with Amy Winehouse is that on first glance, it sounds easy to do. A little rasp here, keep your mouth horizontally and exaggerate your openings, think of something depressive and get an Amy Winehouse type in the background, and the worst is this caricatural sound is what you hear on talent shows, but Amy worked and sold because she was natural, she was real because of the story, it was written all over her face and her movements, it was not an impersonator type. And of course the fact that it ended so quickly and so tragic is what led to the whole Amy narrative to be perceived by the public as an um, unfinished project. Which is what leads me to my last and third question. <laughs> Do we really need to finish this project though? It seems like we want to. Like we are obsessed with finding, spotting an Amy Winehouse rebranding it. Everyone, every new artist that goes into that direction, myself included. Um, guilty of that sometimes, I meant.
one, it's natural for fans to dream. Nope, we don't need another Amy because what we heard was Mark Ronson's version of Amy Winehouse with her genius songwriting production wise obviously. And yes, if she would have lived, she would have given us many, many styles, but attempting to uh, reuse Mark Ronson's sauce. It's kind of pointless long term because it's been done once to a perfection point. The best justice closure to the unfinished Amy Winehouse project was brought to life by Paloma Faye's album. The thing is, most of the time, young artists, they, they have to use previously validated sounds to give the audience a reference, uh, an artist that they can be associated with, like a hint, like, okay, this is how I would sound if I were to make it big, so please support me. And that being said, please also support me on my newly created music channel. <laughs> More on that later. Some do it subtle. Some do it on purpose, almost like a tribute song. Some do it naturally. And some don't do it at all, but we still claim they do because we heard them sing one song where they, where they sounded alike. <laughs> Sorry, Carice Eden. I'd say if you want to go long term for it, then. You have to take this to the next level, as cliche as that sounds. And here's actually a good example. It's uh, Tyra Jute, Tyra Jute. She's a new artist, 2,000 subscribers, so small. She's taken the singing style like, eh, eh, eh. But if you look at the visual, she's like a Jackie Kennedy wearing a Madonna iconic bra. Well, Jean-Paul Gaultier, but you get the picture. So congratulations, feel free to check her out. Last, if you're interested in my work, well, there's a song that I wrote uh, as a fictional collab between Christina Aguilera and Amy Winehouse. No introduction Your last name can wait If it's your cup of wine, then you might want to go check my own music channel and, um, well, because it's a new channel, any contribution on Patreon is very much appreciated. So. Cheers from your psycho.